Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Richie from Boston. Today's the 2nd of December, 2017, and I literally want every single person to like and share this video wherever they can, because this is the most important thing I've ever seen on the internet, and it backs up every single solitary quote-unquote conspiracy theory we've ever talked about. This is straight from the horse's mouth. If you've followed me over the years, you've seen the veritable cornucopia of videos I've put up about CERN. CERN, 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 on and on and on and on it goes. <clears throat> I had Anthony Patch on with me for about four months. We did a couple of shows a week. If you were not aware of that, it's been going on for quite a while. It was going on for quite a while. Anthony went his way. I went my way. We don't agree about everything, but still. Same arena is what it is. Now, everyone's seen these videos and these clips right here. Everybody has seen Jordy Rose, the finance guy behind the D-Wave quantum computer, explain that it's like an alien. It's like kneeling at the altar of an alien god. We've all heard them ad nauseum talking about pulling resources out of other dimensions and storing them in the qubit, which is the chip that runs the D-Wave quantum computer. Now, take a look right here. You can't miss this, okay? You really can't miss this. The word demon is right there in the word D-Wave. There's no two ways about that. D-E-M-A-N. And, of course, that's coincidental. It's the same thing. It's the same coincidence that puts the 666 in the CERN logo. But this video is going to be able to prove to anyone that you know exactly what these guys are doing with their own word. A lot of people think that Jordy Rose is the inventor of the D-Wave. Jordy Rose is the money man behind D-Wave. This guy, for the most part, is one of the brainchilds. You may have heard this word quantum computing. Uh, it's often people have the misconception that it's some kind of newfangled supercomputer. It's decidedly not that. Um, Quantum computers allow us to access hidden features of nature, new dimensions, and if we can access these sort of hidden dimensions uh, at scale, we could have unimaginable computing power. Okay, so we've all heard that ad nauseum. These guys are not shy about it. They are straight up telling us they're pulling other dimensional beings and information from these beings, the all-seeing gods, whatever you want to call them, and they're bringing them back to our planet. How about that? Now, here's Jordy Rose in July talking in Vancouver, British Columbia, to a bunch of computer programming students, and he's trying to encourage them to come work for D-Wave. Now, Kindred, the first place you ever heard about Kindred on the Internet was on this channel right here. I was talking about Kindred before anyone even knew what it was. Okay, if you guys remember, several months ago, I put out a video where... The people at Kindred, which is the creator of the D-Wave, the finance guy behind the D-Wave quantum computer, Gordy Rose, he started a website, and I put it up. I'm going to say I was the first one to put it up. And when we put the video, when we put the website link up, there was nothing on it. It was Okay, so you see that. I put this up a long time ago, and now this plays. Now, real quick, let me show you somebody. These are drawings done by a writer called H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft is a very strange person whose both of his parents ended up committed. This guy admittedly had night terrors, and he wrote, quote-unquote, science fiction. Parents were committed. He wanted to be a professional astronomer, but never finished high schools. He was best buddies with Harry Houdini, another person who was deeply steeped in the occult. He wrote 10, 100,000 uh, letters in his lifetime, didn't like sex. He suffered night terrors. He inspired Batman, Black Sabbath, South Park, and more. He's not buried under his headstone. And Kulu is one of the drawings I was just showing you. Now, why am I talking about H.P. Lovecraft? Well, because I'm not the only one talking about H.P. Lovecraft. I knew there would be something about the occult. Now, listen to this. Here's a video I put up about a year and a half ago, and it clearly shows CERN alluding to 
the Mandela effect. These guys were basically flaunting or they were playing along, basically telling us that they were behind the Mandela effect. Now, why am I showing you HP Lovecraft? Why am I talking about the Mandela effect? Okay, here we go. Here's Jody Rose in his own words, explaining that what they're pulling through from other dimensions, it wouldn't be accurate to call them demons because demons doesn't quite sum it up. In this video right here, you're going to hear Jordy Rose in his own words explain that they have opened a literal tsunami and that mankind is not going to be ready for this. Here's Jordy in July talking about the Mandela effect, the quantum key to the pit, and the rumors that CERN and D-Wave are behind the Mandela effect. In his own words. Over the years there, I got sent pajamas, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. You know, there's lots of interesting things that happen when you build something like a quantum computer. But just as an aside, because I thought it was funny, one of the interesting things that's happened from the D-Wave story is there's this gigantic uh, conspiracy that's arisen on the internet that goes like this. So D-Wave build quantum computers. The way that they work, if you know this, how this works, is one of the interpretations is that you tap into these parallel universes and they do computations. Sounds really weird. But... Uh, Notice that he... He tries to ridicule his own words. You know, it sounds really weird. They tap into other dimensions, but he's clearly showing Anthony Patch, and he just basically glosses over the whole thing. But this is going to get much, much more serious. Now, and I also am playing this at a faster speed to avoid a copyright strike. So there's that. What, what, what's happened is this idea has been hijacked to describe something called the Mandela effect, which is this thing where um, the past changes... So think about something you know to be true from the past. And then imagine you went out on the internet and you can't find it at all. It's not there. It doesn't match with your experience. So these people think that D-Wave is responsible and CERN. And of course, the quantum key to the abyss factors into it somehow. I'm not exactly sure how. OK, so that, that's just D-Wave. Uh, I did that for about 15 years. Now, before I made this video, I called and I texted Anthony Patch to get him to comment on this. And he hasn't gotten back to me. And he probably won't. So there's that because, you know. Why not? At any rate, this gets much worse. In this video, he's saying that he's basically done with D-Wave and he's working with Kindred and they're going to make AI robots that can do every single solitary thing a human can do, but better. Now notice the symbolism on his shirt because these guys are loaded with it because everything that they're doing is on the occult level, which is why they surround themselves with symbolism at all time. They have to. It's part of the deal. You see what I'm saying? It's all coincidental, but these guys are constantly and always wearing the symbolism. But I digress. What you've heard about AI is not what we mean by AI. What we mean by AI is a software system that can do literally anything that a human can do. Literally anything. And Obviously, computers are better at things than people in lots of different ways. So now imagine not only can they do everything that a human can do, but they can do everything that the best human at any task could do better than them. So imagine there was the mental Olympics of the 100 meter dash and Usain Bolt is the fastest person. Now imagine that's some kind of a mental thing like writing a novel or writing whatever. Imagine now that the thing is so much faster than Usain Bolt, like for example, it's a spaceship. Yeah. It's, it's still doing the same thing, but it's doing it so much better because we're limited because we're people. So um, what Kindred is trying to do is solve this problem. How do you build machines that are better than people at everything? Now there's a mental block that we have here when we think about this. Because when you think about that, one of your questions might be, for example, what are the applications of this? So imagine this. Imagine for $10, let's say, I could build a, uh, a machine, like a little robot that had fingers and eyes and all that. And it could do your job better than you, no matter what it is. And I could sell that to your employer for, say, $15 and make a profit instead of having to pay you $100,000 a year. So right off the bat, this goes back to the video that True Stream Media put out a year and a half or so ago called Obsolete, where they are literally going to replace humanity in every no one will have any jobs whatsoever if these guys get their wish because they're bringing through demonic entities now does that sound like a conspiracy theory of course it does but do you know where that comes from the horse's mouth continue listening and he is going to straight up say it and you should be terrified and you should be prompted to prepare yourself spiritually because this is a spiritual battle no two ways about it i don't care what you think 
There is a reason that this was put in the Bible. There's just no two ways about it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now stay tuned, because Jordy is going to straight say this. And he also says the same thing that I say all the time. This is going on in the background, whether you know it or not. He also alludes to the fact that everyone's worried about the health care plan and sports and television and the news and politics while this continues to march on in the background. I've listened to this exact interview with Jordy or this presentation with Jordy. I've listened to it at least 15 times since yesterday. Now imagine that was true for every single job. So that's what we're talking about here is a complete and utter transformative change that of the likes of which has never been seen before in the history of humanity, making the industrial revolution look like a little tiny blip on the path that humans have taken from when we emerged from the ooze a few billion years ago. We are right on the verge of that transition now. So uh, this guy, Rich Sutton, is one of the most famous people in the academic world of AI. Now listen, listen. This guy is the guy behind the D-Wave quantum computer, the only quantum computer in the world that is accessing other dimensions according to what they are telling us. He is telling us that we are on the verge right now. So pay attention because what he is going to say should shape your entire future. And like many, when asked, when will this happen? He says things like this. 25% chance within 13 years of this thing that I'm talking about? You know, when you think about what is on the, what you read on the news, you know, CNN, BuzzFeed, whatever, they're all kind of the same nowadays. Think about how unimportant that thing is that you're reading if this is true. Yeah? So what does this have to do with aliens? So uh, Sam Harris, who I quite admire, is a very interesting guy. Um, was reciting this parable at a TED talk that he was giving, and it goes something like this. So, I am, uh, say I'm the President of the United States. So I receive this message from the heavens. So my microwave dish, my SETI dish, finally captures something. And what it says is, in 50 years, or 13 years, we're coming to your planet. You gotta be ready. Now just imagine what would happen if, it, if that happened. A super intelligent alien race beamed down a message to all of us Earthlings saying, we're coming July 13th, 2030, and boy, you better be ready because the mothership is landing right on the front lawn of the White House or wherever you wanted to land on that day. The amount of resources that would be marshaled to try to figure out what to do would it would encompass the whole world. AI is just like that. So when this thing that I'm talking about happens, it's going to be exactly the thing that you're thinking about, about those super intelligent AIs. So the one thing I can tell you is they're not going to be like us. So alien means, you know, different. These things that we're building are not going to be people. They might be really smart, they might be really good at all sorts of different things, but they're not going to be like us. They're going to be aliens. And they're going to be, I'm sorry to say, way smarter than every single person in this room. In now pay attention because he's, he's literally disclosing right this moment. ...that we can't even comprehend. So this, of course, triggers a lot of alarm. One of the guys who talks about this is Elon who uh, says things like this, like, when you do this, beware. Because you think, just like the guy in the stories, that when you do this, you're gonna put that, that, that little guy in a pentagram, and you're gonna have your holy water out, and you're gonna wave it at the thing, and by God, it's gonna do exactly what you say, and not one thing more, but it never works out that way. So uh, this, is an, this is an attitude that some are having, this emerging alarmism about the way this is, is going to go. But this, these words, demons, doesn't capture the essence of what's happening here. Uh, 
I don't know if any of you are uh, turn of the century weird fiction fans, but there's this guy named H.P. Lovecraft, who's a very famous American weird fiction author. And he exposed a, a, a view which is called cosmicism. And the essence of cosmicism is cosmic indifference. So he, what he was saying is basically, yes, there are these massively intelligent entities out there, but they're not good, they're not evil. They just don't give a shit about you even in the slightest. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons. They're not evil. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that we're summoning in, and these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons. They're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want. Now, you can spin that any which way you like. He has straight up told you these entities that we're summoning into this world. He's putting a call to action out. He's sitting in front of a classroom full of code writing students and asking them to come on board right now. He's already said that they've opened the floodgates. He's already described what they were. He's already saying that they will appear to be quote unquote alien. If you want to stay in your holiday season, your safe space, whatever you want, this is what we've been telling you for years. And this is why we've been telling you because while everyone else is watching Buzzfeed and CNN and NFL and everything else, some of us have been studying this ad nauseum. This is it. Aligned with what we want. So this transition is really, really massively important for our entire species to navigate. And going back to that thing that Sam Harris was saying, nobody is paying attention. This thing is happening in the background while people bicker about politics and what, what's going to be in the health care plan in the U.S. And underneath it all, is this rising tsunami that, if we're not careful, is going to wipe us all out. How much clearer do you need it to be said? This is the guy that started D-Wave. This is the man that's given us a high-speed internet connection to other dimensional beings. He is saying it. Here it is. It couldn't be any clearer. I don't know what else to tell you. So um, on that uh, pleasant note, uh, we're hiring people <laughs> <laughs> to try to make something like this happen. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, this is a very uh, difficult project, of course. And I'm, I'm kind of a little bit tongue in cheek about all this, like, you know, uh, how, how bad things are because uh, it's not really like that. You know, there's technology is a double-edged sword, even something like this. Uh, it's agnostic. It depends who wields it. If you want to have a say in how all this goes down, you can't sit on the sidelines. If you want to have a say... Do you understand what I'm saying? They are absolutely addressing us straight up. It doesn't get any clearer than that. And he has completely, completely said this. Full armor of God. This is no joke. I haven't seen this information anywhere else whatsoever at all. Richie from Boston, share this. I'm out.